pain, no gain? What happens to your body when you work out? It is not necessary to go hard all the time to see results. In fact, quite the opposite. Your body is capable of incredible things, but it needs rest and recovery. Here are some following things that happen within your body during workouts. Increased heart rate, increased oxygen consumption, when lifting weights, tiny muscle tears, depleted glycogen levels, your body's preferred source of energy, adrenal glands release epinephrine, aka adrenaline, your core temperature will go up, and your brain will try to cool your body down because its primary job is to protect your body when exercising. Your body will switch to a sympathetic state or fight or flight mode. If performing an endurance workout, possible dehydration. As you can see, your body undergoes quite a lot when working out. Rest and recovery isn't just recommended, it's necessary. Progression. The principle of progression in endurance training implies that there is an optimal level of overload that should be achieved, as well as an optimal time frame for this overload to occur. The progression principle instructs that the overload process should not be increased too slowly or improvement is unlikely to occur. However, overload that is increased too rapidly can result in injury issues or muscle damage. Progression is a key aspect of overload. Often, individuals do the same workouts over and over again. This forms a level of familiarity within the body and thus physical progress is not made. In order to properly overload the body, progression is key. Once an exercise starts to feel easy, it's time to up the ante so you're always overloading your muscles and adapting to get strong and fit. It is also important not to always work at high intensities, which could lead to overtraining. Sometimes progressing is as simple as changing the exercise you're doing to something different. Back to the basics. Movement patterns that should be mastered before moving on to more challenging exercises, such as hip hinge, lunge, squat, push, pull, and core stabilization. Oftentimes people see some crazy mover exercise online or in a magazine and they want to try it. I completely understand this, but what is the point in trying a complex move if when you squat you can barely get to a 90 degree angle? We need to focus on the movements that make up our everyday life so we can move how we were intended to move while staying pain free. Body weight exercises are fantastic and can be very challenging when programmed and performed correctly. Get to know yourself. You know yourself better than anyone else and you should know when your body needs a really sweaty workout or when you need to just chill out. While some have no problem taking a break from working out or beginning a workout routine in general, others can't seem to relax and feel the need to go, go, go. Signs you might need to relax. Irritability constant muscle soreness, loss of appetite, extreme fatigue, poor workout performance, and a decrease in your desire to exercise. Working out every day is not necessary if you train correctly for three to four times a week. Get to know the difference between being unmotivated and overworked. Movement is medicine. Don't underestimate the power of daily movement. Moving all your joints through their full range of motion is so important. The better you can move, the better you can get through life injury free, and the easier it will be to stick to your more intense workouts. Check out some of the examples below. Active recovery. Recovery and rest are actually two different notions. Active recovery refers to just that. Actively doing something to repair your muscles, whether that be going through a 50 to 70% max effort workout, going for a nice easy walk or hike, stretching, mobilizing your joints, and so on, just to get the blood flowing and body moving. It also helps to minimize the effects of DOMS, delayed onset muscle soreness. It's great for relieving mental stress. You're able to get out of your normal routine and relax a little more. This shouldn't be strenuous. A lot of it is really going to be a function of the type of training you're engaged in and how fit you are says Dr. Cedric Bryant, Chief Science Officer for the American Council on Exercise. The more intense the training bout, the more recovery time you will need. 
you really need to be smart about appropriate recovery. Some workouts are tough and other workouts are easy. This ebb and flow of hard efforts interspersed with easier efforts is essential to allow for proper adaptation. That is the essence of training. Bryant recommends alternating your workouts between hard training and easy movement. He says exercisers should incorporate low impact, low intensity workouts like yoga or Pilates on the days following their hardest sessions. He also noted that the less fit you are, the more time you'll need to allow for your body to adapt. So if you're just beginning a new exercise routine, it's a good idea to start slow and allow some extra time for recovery. Rest. Lifting weights at the gym creates a stress that breaks down your muscle fibers. That's the stimulus. It's not until after you've finished your workout that the desired adaptations, increased strength, muscle growth, etc. can start to occur. While you're resting, your body begins working on rebuilding those muscle fibers, but you'll only achieve the desired effects if you allow for adequate rest time. It's during the rest that positive changes occur, says Bryant. Muscles get stressed and adapt to the stress. These are changes that allow you to be able to handle greater levels of resistance. Move the body in a rhythmic fashion that doesn't involve a great deal of pounding and that's low impact. This will allow you to help the body to move comfortably. Use the talk test as a gauge to ensure that it's the right level of intensity. In other words, you should be able to maintain a basic level of conversation during this type of exercise. Also important for adequate recovery, cooling down after your workouts, getting sufficient amounts of sleep, and eating right. Without pain, you can make gains. If you work out until you're in pain every time, how long does it take you before you are ready to crush the next workout? The goal is to push yourself sometimes and go easier at other times. Imagine it like this. You have to run a 100 meter dash as fast as you can. But then, once you finish, you only have 15 seconds to recover before you have to sprint another 100 meters just as fast. Do you really think your muscles will be recovered and ready to propel you that fast once more? When your body has an adequate time to rest, it will come back stronger and ready for its next workout. Making gains or improvements in your performance or muscle mass requires time to heal. Athletes have an off season for a reason. They work on all of the fundamentals and change up their workouts and recovery methods from when they are training during the season. It is ridiculous to think that you must go hard in every single workout to reap the benefits. So keep on crushing those workouts, but please take time to recover and rest.